right. Uh, okay, uh, I hope everybody can see this. <laughs> um, so um, last time we saw that in the Adams Novikov E2 term, there's an interesting filtration that leads to, uh, there's a filtration in which the uh, sub quotient, the, the sub quotient number H displays VH periodic families and that's related and, and VH periodic families are related to formal group laws of height H. So the question that I was asked at the end and which I'm going to answer now is whether this algebraic structure um, <clears throat> is for real in the sense that it reflects a, a similar filtration in the stable homotopy category itself. And the answer to that question is yes. And I'm going to explain today how that works. Um, <clears throat> so uh, recall that there was this short exact sequence. There was this collection of short exact sequences of BP star, BP co-modules that I called chromatic short exact sequences. That there's one for each H greater than or equal to zero. And they look like this. And um, <clears throat> These, se these short exact sequences get spliced together to form a long exact sequence that I called the chromatic resolution. So the question is, is this just algebra or is there some geometry behind this? So what we'd like to do is find uh, spectra. <clears throat> we'd like to find a cofiber sequence of spectra for which this is the... Uh, exact sequence in BP homology. So if there were a cofiber sequence having these co-modules as their BP homology, we would be in business. Um, <clears throat> so we're looking for spectra that I will call N sub H and M sub H so that the BP homology of N sub H is the N upper H in the short exact sequence and similarly for M. And we want a map from the spectrum N sub H to Nancy sub H to Mary sub H, inducing the homomorphism, the inducing the appropriate homomorphism. And we'd like to be able to do this for all uh, non-negative H. And we're gonna do this uh, by induction on H. Now, the first step is pretty easy because for the first step, uh, we can take N sub zero to be the sphere spectrum. It's BP homology is BP star. And then we can take M sub zero to be the rationalization of the sphere spectrum. Okay. Um, so there's nothing new here. This is pretty straightforward. Uh, then the quotient uh, would be uh, <clears throat> the Q mod Z, Z localized at P more spectrum. Now, the way we can do this for, for positive values of H, in order to do this for positive values of H, we need Bauss field localization. Bauss field localization will take us from N sub H to M sub H. Um, <clears throat> now, Bauss field constructed this functor in, cat in the categories of spectra and spaces and spectra respectively in papers published in 1975 and 1978, which was, uh, and he used model category theory methods. And this was perfect timing for us. <clears throat> so thank you, Pete. Um, so how does this work? Um, so the next couple of slides are gonna be in the language of model categories. Now, if you're not familiar with model categories, um, I'm going to set, give a similar description in terms of infinity categories uh, at a few slides from now. But let's say we have a model category C, such which could be that of spaces or of spectra. <clears throat> now, what we wanna do is the following. We wanna alter the model structure in a certain way. So <clears throat> we want to enlarge the collection of weak equivalences uh, and keep the same collection of cofibrations. Now, <clears throat> this means that more of the cofibrations are trivial, meaning they're homotopy equivalences, they're weak equivalences. 
And that means that there are fewer fibrations because fibrations have to a fibration has has to has to satisfy the um, what is it the right lifting property with respect to any trivial cofibration. And there are more trivial cofibrations now than there were before. So that means there are fewer fibrations than before. <clears throat> so <clears throat> if you can do that, this would lead you to a new fibrant replacement functor, L. <clears throat> so <clears throat> the fibrant replacement functor in a model category theory, in a model category is um, a way to take any object in the model category theory and map it by a weak equivalence to a fibrant object. <clears throat> so uh, fibrant objects now are rarer than they were before. And so we're going to get an interest, a more interesting fibrant replacement functor. And I'm going to call it L. So it assigns to each object in the model category a fibrant object Lx. And this could be described as its localization. Now, this sounds uh, straightforward, but there is a catch. Um, <clears throat> it's not obvious that this new model structure that you get this way satisfies all of Quillen's axioms. Um, the sticking point is <clears throat> one of Quillen's axioms is that every map can be factored as a trivial cofibration followed by a uh, fibration. Now we have redefined each of these notions. Um, and so it's not obvious that uh, an arbitrary map can be factored in this way, even though they could be factored in this way in the original model structure. Since we've redefined what it means to be a trivial cofibration and a and what it means to be a fibration, it's not obvious that, th that this factorization can still be carried out. Now, Bousfield needed some delicate set theoretic arguments to prove uh, to prove that this can be done in the categories of spaces and of spectra. Now, a few years later, so he did this in the late 70s. In 2003, uh, Phil Hirshhorn proved a theorem that says you can do this in any model category satisfying certain mild technical conditions. And these technical conditions are met by the categories of spaces and of spectra. Now, I'm going to describe some examples of this process. One way that you might enlarge the collection of weak equivalences is in the category. So let's say we're in the cat either in the category of spaces or of spectra. Um, <clears throat> now, in both cases, a Weak the usual definition of a weak equivalence is that it's a map that induces an isomorphism in all homotopy groups. So one way to uh, weaken this requirement is to say that uh, uh, we want maps that introduce induce isomorphisms of homotopy groups only up to dimension n. Instead of instead of requiring we get an isomorphism in all homotopy groups, we could require that the map induces an isomorphism in homotopy groups only up to dimension n. Um, now, it turns out that if you do this, um, then the fibrant objects are those spaces or spectra that have no homotopy groups or the homotopy groups are trivial above dimension n, and it turns out that the fibrant replacement functor is the nth Posnikov section. In other words, uh, <clears throat> you take an arbitrary space or spectrum and you can kill off the homotopy groups above dimension n by attaching uh, cells. Of, so you can kill all the, you can kill pi n plus one of something by attaching n plus two cells and, and so on. <clears throat> So this is one example of Bousfield localization. Of course, we knew how to do these things long before uh, the 70s. <clears throat> um, so that's that's a, 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 that's an example, but it's not really the example that that ventures to us. So another the example that is that we really care about is um, <clears throat> let's say you've got a homology theory represented by some spectrum E. And you want your you want to say that 
your weak equivalences are maps that induce isomorphisms in this generalized homology theory. <clears throat> um, so when you do that, the fibrant replacement functor is denoted by L sub E, and <clears throat> um, we refer to the fibrant objects as E local spectra. Now there isn't, in general, there isn't an easy description of what these objects look like. They're somewhat mysterious. Um, <clears throat> now it's a straightforward process if either the spectrum E or the spectrum X that you're trying to localize, if either of them is connective, then uh, this functor can be described in arithmetic terms. You're either inverting a bunch of primes or completing at a prime. <clears throat> That is if either E or the spectrum you're trying to localize is connective. But if both of them, uh, wait, maybe I'm saying that wrong. Maybe they both have to be connective. Yeah, sorry, they both have to be connective. If both X and E are connective, then the then localization is just can be described in arithmetic terms. But if either of them fails to be connective, uh, something much more interesting can happen. <clears throat> So here are some formal properties that this functor has. Um, <clears throat> or I'm sorry, I'm going to give you some, some definitions now. We'll say that a spectrum is E local if for every uh, spectrum X, which is E acyclic, for which the E homology vanishes, uh, we want to know that the, the uh, function spectrum of maps from X to Y is contractible. Um, <clears throat> Now, since that functor fx comma blank preserves limits, this means that any limit of E local spectra is also E local. It does not mean that the functor Le preserves limits. The, the limit of E local spectra is E local, but this does not mean that the functor of E localization preserves limits. And I'll show you some examples of this below. Um, <clears throat> Okay, another formal property is that um, <clears throat> any map from X to an E local spectrum Y factors uniquely up to homotopy through uh, LE of X. So LE of X is uh, can be thought of as the initial object in all spectra, among all spectra uh, that are uh, E equivalent to X. All, I'm sorry, all, I said that wrong. L E of X is the initial object in <clears throat> all local spectra to which X can be mapped. Um, <clears throat> okay, another property is that L, the map from X to L E of X extends uniquely through any E equivalence uh, from X to something else. So that means L E of X is the terminal object uh, in the category of spectra uh, that are E equivalent to X. Um, <clears throat> so these, these, these three properties are built sort of formal consequences of the way of, of the way this functor is, is defined. Now, here are two examples. Let's suppose that the functor, that the spectrum E is the rational uh, sphere spectrum, which is the same as the rational eilenberg mclane spectrum. Let's consider that case. Now, <clears throat> in that case, uh, the functor E, L, e, L sub E, is the rationalization functor. That is, you take your spectrum X and smash it with the uh, <clears throat> rational eilenberg mclane spectrum. And since your, since your functor is defined by smashing with something, it preserves homotopy co-limits. Um, now, um, here is an example of a spectrum. Now I'm going to tell you why it, the functor, this functor does not preserve limits. Let's consider the limit of uh, the mod P to the J eilenberg mclane spectra. Now, each of them has uh, trivial rational homology, but their limit, which is the uh, Eilenberg-McLean spectrum for the p-adic integers, 
that is not rationally acyclic because if you the rationalization of that is going to be the eilenberg mclean spectrum for the uh piatic numbers <laughs> so this is not rationally acyclic even though each of the uh each of the mod p to the j eilenberg uh mclean spectra is so um the limit of rationally acyclic spectra need not be rationally acyclic. So the functor Le does not preserve homotopy limits. Um, <clears throat> now, uh, uh, let's. Now we're going to look at a second example. And then in the second example, the spectrum E that we want to localize with respect to is the mod P Moore spectrum. In that case, um, <clears throat> what you get is piatic, the functor that you get is piatic completion, which means um, <clears throat> you take the limit over J of X mod P to the J. Um, any, any spectrum X has a map, a self map that induces multiplication by P to the J in homology and homotopy and so on. So that map has a cofiber, which I'm denoting by X mod P to the J. And you can take the homotopy limit of those cofibers and that's, uh, that's how the piatic completion is defined. So that's the localization functor when E is the mod P Moore spectrum. When E is the rational Moore spectrum, uh, the the the, the 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 Bowes field localization is rationalization. So these are two cases in which um, <clears throat> there's an arithmetic description of the functor. Now this functor preserves homotopy limits, but it does not preserve homotopy co-limits. So in general, Bowes field localization need not play nicely with either limits or co-limits even though it's always the case that the limit of local spectra is local. Now, um, in the early 70s, before Bousfield had done proved his theorems, uh, what happened here? Okay, in the early 70s, um, Adams suggested, Adams was giving a series of lectures at the University of Chicago. And he suggested a way to define Le of X. He says, let's consider, let's de define it to be the cofiber of a map from Ce of X into X, where Ce of X is the co-limit of all E star acyclic spectra that map to X. That was Adam's proposal. Now, Bousfield was in the room at the time, and he asked, he pointed out that this is a problem because we do not know that the collection of all uh, <clears throat> such spectra, all E acyclic spectra mapping to X, we don't know that that collection is a set. There are too many of them, and this is a problem. Uh, <clears throat> uh, now, Adams did not have an answer to this. Uh, later, Bousfield solved this problem by proving that you don't need to consider all a e all acyclic spectra mapping to X. It's enough to consider the co-limit of all a e star acyclic CW spectra, where whose cardinality is bounded by that of the homotopy groups of E. So if E has countable homotopy groups then you only need to consider countably countable CW spectra that are E acyclic. Even if E, even if um, <clears throat> even if E has uncountable homotopy groups, say say it, say the homotopy groups of E involve the p-adic integer. So that's uncountable, but it's still uh, you still have a handle on the cardinality of it. It's Aleph one, I think. Um, <clears throat> you can you can still Get away with a set of uh, a set of acyclic spectra. So this solves the problem. So this is one way to define. Um, <clears throat> this is this is this is how Bousfield defined L E of X. He defined it. He used Adams' idea, but he needed some set theory to show that Adams' idea, as originally stated, doesn't work because there's too many such 
acyclic spectrum, but you can put a limit on their cardinality and that's good enough. <clears throat> now, in any case, there's something else one could look at. One could look at um, the co-limit of all finite E acyclic uh, spectra, E acyclic CW spectra mapping to X. One could look at that co-limit and one could define uh, <clears throat> LE upper FIN X to be the cofiber of that map. Now in the original papers, that superscript was just F. I've made it uh, FIN to remind us that it refers to finite spectra. <clears throat> So this is known as the finite E localization of X. <clears throat> I don't mean that the localization itself is a finite object, but the uh, <clears throat> it's defined in terms of finite spectra mapping to X. And <clears throat> this, this kind of functor was studied in a paper of Miller in 92, and again, uh, <clears throat> in a paper of Bousfield in uh, 2001. <clears throat> Uh, now, this functor, Le fin, has formal properties similar to those of L sub E. It's a different, it may be a different functor in general, um, <clears throat> but any, whatever it is, it admits a natural transformation. There's a natural transformation from the finite E localization functor to the E localization functor. And that is actually the subject of the telescope conjecture, as we'll see later. <clears throat> um, now, we can say that a spectrum Y is finitely E local if for each finite X with, uh, e, with trivial E homology, the function spectrum from <clears throat> X to Y is contractible. So this is a weaker condition than we had before. Uh, uh, before we'd said a spectrum is E local if uh, if any x with e star if if you if for any x with e star x equals zero the fun this function spectrum is zero is is contractible. Now we're only requiring it to be true for finite uh, acyclic spectrum. Now. Again, this functor preserves limits. So this means that any limit of finitely E local spectra is finitely E local. Um, <clears throat> and we can say that any map from X to a finitely E local spectrum factors uniquely through this functor Le fin of X. <clears throat> and a, there's a similar property. So, so let me back up. Uh, so this condition means that uh, Le fin of X is the initial object in a certain category. And then there's uh, th there's this condition, which means it's the terminal object in another category related to X. Are there any questions uh, so far? Okay, now I'm going to talk about how you do this in the world of infinity categories. So a certain um, statement in Lurie's higher topos theories is a uh, infinity categorical analog of Bousfield localization. Um, <clears throat> now the input is a what Lurie calls a presentable infinity category C and a set of morphisms S that are meant to be made into weak equivalences, which is the uh, which is the notion of isomorphism in the um, in the in the world of infinity categories. <clears throat> so I have to tell you what a presentable infinity category is. Uh, it means that uh, a, a, an infinity category is presentable if it has small co-limits and every object in there is the co-limit, is a co-limit of small objects. Now, what's a small object? An object is small if the mapping space from it to any filtered co-limit is equivalent to the co-limit of the mapping spaces. So it's it's analogous. Uh, <clears throat> uh, okay, that's a that's a condition that is only satisfied by certain objects in the in a category, and they're known as small. They're sometimes called compact, but the 
the term that Lurie uses is, is small. Um, <clears throat> now, so we're talking about presentable infinity categories. Now, I told you a few slides ago that um, Hirschhorn proved a theorem in 2003 that said that you can do Bousfield localization in any um, model category satisfying some some mild technical conditions. I did not say what those technical conditions were, but they are uh, similar to the conditions that I'm describing now for infinity categories. <clears throat> okay, so uh, Lurie makes this definition, an object Z. So remember, we've got, we now have um, a presentable infinity category and a collection of morphisms that we want to uh, <clears throat> that we want to invert. So S is that collection of morphisms, that set of morphisms. So um, <clears throat> an object Z is said to be S local if every morphism <clears throat> uh, from X, I'm sorry, if for each morphism in S, we get that induces an ice, a weak equivalence of mapping spaces, as indicated here, mapping spaces to Z. An object Z is said to be S local if it has this property. A morphism is said to be an S equivalence if it induces, a morphism from A to B is said to be an S equivalence if it induces a weak equivalence of morphisms to Z for each S local object Z. So these are formal uh, properties uh, that uh, you can, these are sort of formal definitions you can make when you have a collection S of morphisms that you're interested in, that you want to localize with respect to. Um, now, let's say that S bar is the set of all S equivalences. That can be cons explicitly constructed from S in a certain way. And let's let C prime be the full subcategory of S local objects. <clears throat> so this is Lurie's theorem. For each object X in the category, there is uh, an S equivalence from X to another object X prime, which is S local. Um, <clears throat> the subcategory of uh, local objects is itself presentable and the most importantly, the inclusion functor of local objects in the category of local objects into C has a left adjoint L. And this is the analog of Bousfield's uh, vibrant replacement functor. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> now, um, okay, so that is the infinity category analog of Bousfield localization. It says that you can uh, uh, do this uh, whenever you have, you can, you can, you can do about the analog of Bousfield localization, whenever you have a presentable infinity category and you have a set of morphisms that you want to invert. Now that set, the, your presentable infinity category could be the infinity category of spectra and the <clears throat> set of morphisms that you want to invert could be the set of all, um, <clears throat> uh, uh, all morphisms that induce an isomorphism in your favorite homology theory. That example is is allowed. <clears throat> but anyway, Lurie proved that you can always you can always do this in the, under those circumstances. So in particular, you have uh, <clears throat> the analog of Bau the analog of Bousfield localization in the infinity category of spectrum. Bousfield localization with respect to your favorite homology theory. <clears throat> Okay, now I'm going to shift gears and talk about something called Bousfield equivalence. So <clears throat> two spectra are said to be Bousfield equivalent, um, <clears throat> which is denoted by this, this notation, if their localization functors are the same. Now, this does not mean that E and E prime have the same homotopy type. Far from it. It just means that their localization functors are the same. Um, <clears throat> another way of saying it is that um, 
the collection of acyclic spectra that they define. That is the collection of spectra whose smash product with E, um, we want that to be the same as the collection of, spa of uh, spectra whose smash product with E prime is contractible. That's another way of, of defining this. Um, <clears throat> and then we'll denote that this defines an equivalence class, an equivalence relation in the category of spectra, and we'll denote the equi equivalence class of E by pointy bracket E, as, as you see here. Um, <clears throat> now, let me repeat, this is this equivalence relation is much coarser than um, weak equivalence. For example, it turns out that any um, finite complex who's, that is not rationally acyclic, any finite complex with non-trivial rational homology is Bauss field equivalent to the sphere spectrum. Um, now, you can do wedge and smash product operations, and these induce corresponding operations in Bauss field classes. So uh, that's one thing you have. Um, you can also define a partial ordering on Bauss field classes by saying that E, the Bauss field class of E is greater than or equal to that of E prime if E star X being contractible implies that E prime star X is contractible. Or I'm sorry, E smash X is contractible implies E prime smash X is contractible. That gives you a partial ordering on these equivalence classes. This means that the maximal equivalence class is that of the sphere spectrum S and the minimal one is that of a point. Now there's a theorem of a, Japan, a Japanese mathematician named Okawa proved that the collection of Bauss field equivalence classes is a set. I don't know how he did that. <clears throat> And we don't really need that for this discussion. Now, there's also a notion of a complement of a Bauss field class, which may or may not exist. But a complement is supposed to be a class that has the property that um, <clears throat> the wedge of the complementary class with the class of E is supposed to be the all of the the, the maximal element, the, the Bauss field class of the sphere spectrum. And the smash product is supposed to be contractible. Um, most Bauss field classes do not have complements. Uh, Bauss field studies this in his paper. Most Bauss field classes do not have complements. For example, the Bauss field class of the integer eilenberg maclean spectrum does not have a complement. Now, <clears throat> here's a lemma that I proved uh, in 84. Let's say you have a self map from to X from some suspension of X. Now, you usually hear about these such things when X is a finite complex uh, that has certain properties with respect to Morava K theory. Um, uh, and there's a theorem that we'll get to that says that such maps always exist. But for the moment, for the purpose of this proposition, X can be any spectrum and equipped with a self map like this then there are two gadgets associated with it, namely the cofiber, CV, C sub V, the cofiber, and the telescope that you get by uh, iterate, that's the co-limit you get by iterating V. You have those two, if you have a self map, you have those two uh, spectra associated with it. And the statement is that <clears throat> um, uh, the Bauss field class of X is the same as the Bauss field class of the wedge of the telescope and the cofiber, and the smash product of the telescope with the cofiber is always contractible. This is this is sort of a formal. This is pretty formal. Um, <clears throat> so we're going to come back to that later. Um, <clears throat> now. I'm going to talk about some spectra related to BP, known that Hopkins once called the circus animals. So here they are. Um, BP bracket H 
uh, is that the thing you get by killing all the higher all all the higher v's above v h. Um, p of h is the thing you get from b p by killing uh, the indicated prime ideal, and uh, k little k of h. Um, <clears throat> Well, that's meant to be pi star k of h is uh, <clears throat> the thing you get from BP by killing all of the v's except vh. So these are three spectra, three BP module spectra that uh, can be constructed. Um, <clears throat> so in particular, um, p of zero by definition, the the zeroth ideal is the is is the zero ideal, and um, <clears throat> p of zero is BP itself. K of zero is and uh, is the same as BP bracket zero, which is the mod P eilenberg mclean spectrum. Uh, <clears throat> right. And H mod P will denote the integer eilenberg mclean spectrum. <clears throat> now, each of these three spectra admits a self-map that induces multiplication by V sub H in homotopy. So... <clears throat> In each case, you can iterate them to form a telescope. And uh, we denote these telescopes as follows. Um, they're called E of H, B of H, and capital K of H. And you can also do the same thing. You can also form, admit, form a, such a self-map for BP itself. And the telescope then is denoted by VH inverse of BP. So these are these are so I've defined certain spectra uh, related to to be to the BP spectrum. <laughs> now, um, <clears throat> the last of these is Morava K theory. Um, e of zero is the same as K of zero, which is the rational eilenberg mclean spectrum. BP one, BP bracket one, and E bracket one are respectively the atom summands of connective and periodic complex K theory localized at P. And E of H is the Johnson-Wilson spectrum, not to be confused with the Morava spectrum E sub H, uh, which has the same Bousfield class as E of H. Now, um, I'm going to say a little more about this. The homotopy groups of um, <clears throat> E of H is what's indicated here. It's a polynomial algebra over the p-local integers on the first H Vs with the last of them inverted. That's the homotopy of the Johnson-Wilson spectrum. The homotopy of the Morava spectrum is fancier. Um, and we replace the p-local integers by uh, the Vit ring for Fp to the H. And uh, we have a power series ring on H minus one generators. And then there's another generator that gets inverted. And the dimensions of these generators, the, the dimension of the generator that gets inverted is minus two. And the dimensions of these UIs uh, are each zero. Um, and there is a map from E of H to E sub H that sends the V's uh, to the elements indicated here. And we know that E sub H is an E infinity ring spectrum. This is a theorem of Gorse, Hopkins, and Miller. Um, e of H does not, I'm not sure what, it's not known to be an E infinity ring spectrum and it probably isn't one. Um, I'm not sure what the situation is there. <clears throat> now, here's a theorem about Bousfield classes of spectra related to BP. So the first theorem is, the first statement is that B of H and K of H have the same Bousfield uh, class. The next is that E of H has the same Bousfield class as uh, VH inverse of BP. The third statement is that, P, I don't know if you can remember the definitions of all these spectra, but anyway, P of H, the Bousfield class of P of H, that's the one you get by killing a prime ideal. That is the 
wedge of the Bousfield class of the H Morava K theory and P of H plus one. Um, <clears throat> the Bousfield class of the Johnson Wilson spectrum E of H is the same as that of the wedge of the appropriate Morava K theories. Um, BP bracket H has the same Bousfield class as E of H wedge the mod P Eilenberg McLean spectrum. Um, the Morava K theories have the property that if you smash any two together, any two different ones together, it's contractible. The smash product of any two different distinct Morava K theories is contractible. And um, <clears throat> if you smash any one of them with the mod P Eilenberg McLean spectra, that's also contractible. In other words, the mod P homology of any Morava K theory spectrum is trivial. Now, um, you might wonder if the Bousfield class of BP is the same as the Bousfield class of uh, the P local sphere spectrum. I wondered this myself in the 70s. <laughs> um, if, it, if that were the case, uh, life would be a lot simpler than it is, but it is not the case. It's far from the case. It turns out that there's infinite accountable uh, collection of spectra interpolating between BP and the P local sphere spectrum. There's a countable sequence of proper Bousfield inequalities between the two. And this is spelled out in uh, my 1984 paper. <clears throat> um, now, here's another definition. We'll say that a spectrum, a, a spectrum E has height H if all of its Morava K theories above H vanish. That's what it means for a spectrum. Let's say a spectrum has height H if it has that property. Um, <clears throat> this means that BP bracket H and the Johnson Wilson E of H each have height H. Um, <clears throat> now there's a conjecture called the redshift conjecture of Osonian rogueness. Uh, I, for, as far as I know, it was first stated in 2006. And it says that if a ring spectrum R has height H, then <clears throat> its algebraic K theory spectrum, K of R, has height H plus one. In other words, <coughs> taking the algebraic K theory of a spectrum raises the height by one. And this phenomenon is known as redshift. Now, they proved that this is true for the spectrum BP bracket one in 2002. They proved that its K theory has height H, has height two. And there was a result by Mitchell that had, Steve Mitchell proved it in 1990. And his theorem is that if, if A is any discrete ring, um, <clears throat> you can look at its eilenberg mclean spectrum that has height zero and its algebraic K theory has height one. <clears throat> In 2022, last year, Jeremy Hahn and Dylan Wilson proved that proved the redshift conjecture for BP for BP bracket H for any H. So this is the first ex known example that's known to be true for all heights. <clears throat> um, right now, um, the two most widely studied localization functors are. Um, <clears throat> localization with respect to Morava K theory and localization with respect to Johnson Wilson theory. And uh, we know that the Bousfield class of E of H is strictly greater than that of E of H minus one. And that means that there's a natural transformation from L sub H to L sub H minus one. And this leads to something called the chromatic tower. So, <clears throat> Um, the chromatic tower is what's illustrated here. You have a spectrum X, you can map it to any L sub H of X and the L sub H is form a tower. That's the chromatic tower of X. <clears throat> um, so this is analogous to the chromatic filtration uh, in, uh, <clears throat> that I discussed earlier. 
Um, so the chromatic filtration of X is given, you could look at the kernels. The chromatic filtration of the homotopy of X is given by the kernels of the maps to pi star LH of X for various H's. Now, this tower is known to converge, meaning X is the homotopy limit of the diagram above if so one, exa one example, one result in this direction is if X is a p-local finite spectrum. So this is <clears throat> a theorem of Hopkins and myself uh, proved in 1992. <clears throat> it was generalized um, by Toby Bartel to uh, spectra that are connective and p-local such that BP star of X has finite homological dimension as a BP star module. That was proved by Bartel in 2016. Now, um, we know how to compute the BP homology of LH of X in terms of the BP homology of X itself. In particular, we know that if, uh, <clears throat> if the BP homology of X vanishes after inverting VH minus one, then we know that the BP homology of LH of X is obtained from the BP homology of X by simply inverting V sub H. Now, this condition is met if X is the spectrum N sub H that I described earlier in the lecture. Um, and uh, this means that we can define M sub H to be LH of N sub H. In other words, Bousfield localization with respect to EH is the functor we need to form the chromatic uh, resolution. <clears throat> so this means we have, des this is the desired geometric resolution of the chromatic resolution, um, geometric realization of the chromatic resolution. <clears throat> So we know that we can make all that happen, that we know that the chromatic filtration that I described in, in the algebra in the Adams Novikov E2 term actually has a geometric underpinning. Now, one, uh, one last definition. <clears throat> um, suppose your, your Bousfield localization functor has the property that it is obtained by simply smashing with the suppose that E. Le of X is the smash product of X with the E local sphere spectrum. If that happens, we say that the functor Le of X is smashing. Um, now, a smashing localization functor preserves homotopy co-limits. Now remember that in general, Bousfield localization does not preserve homotopy co-limits, but if it happens to be smashing, then it does. Now, <clears throat> Hopkins and I showed in 92 that each of the L sub H's is smashing. Um, now, it is the localization with respect to Morava K theory is not smashing. Um, Miller showed that the finite version of L sub H is smashing. And that's where I'm gonna to stop today. So thank you. Hey, yeah, let's first thank Doug for the great speak, for the great talk.